Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to Interstitial Lung Disease Info. In this episode, I'd like to talk to you about brain fog in people who have interstitial lung disease, pulmonary fibrosis, or chronic lung disease, and they have low levels of oxygen. And I decided to make this video because I received a really interesting comment in which someone who is watching the channel shared a very, very good uh, patient experience. And I think I'd like to share this with you first and then give you some ideas about what's in the medical literature about this because it's really, really interesting even for me. It was an interesting uh, thing to read about and I'd like to share some of uh, the articles that are online that you can then look up yourself and then find more information on this because I think it's a really under-investigated part of uh, the patient experience in interstitial lung diseases and chronic lung disease in general. So let me read you out the comment first. So I'll just swap over to the comment. So I'll read it out to you. So basically, someone who's watching the channel was saying this, the main noticeable difference oxygen will give is that the brain fog will diminish and breathlessness will keep triggering uh, this reaction. So this is when people go on oxygen when they need oxygen. So they've had maybe an ambulatory oxygen assessment or something like that to check whether their levels are low and if they need supplementary oxygen for their pulmonary fibrosis or interstitial lung disease or chronic lung disease. So I'll, I'll let me continue reading this. I always take the oxygen with me when walking. If not, I tend to fog up on short-term memory, but oxygen will definitely help this, plus muscles feel better and not so stiff. But that's me. So obviously it's a personal uh, effect, but that's something that I think many other patients may feel as well. I don't think it's something that's ir not, uh, not rational. Uh, and then the comment goes on about other things related to supportive care for pulmonary fibrosis, because uh, this is the video in which I shared, uh, in which this comment was, was made. So if you want to see this video, you can find it on my channel. Just click on my name under the video and you'll be taken to the the list of all the videos and you can find this one there. But let me just read you out some of these things because I think it's really, really important. I think it's really interesting because I think a lot of people when they operate on low oxygen levels, they're not there a hundred percent. So this can be a problem and I think it leads to a lot of other issues. And I was looking, uh, for some things about this in the medical literature, there isn't a lot out there, to be honest, because there haven't been so many studies looking specifically at this, I believe what's the effect of low oxygen, but not significantly low oxygen, just relatively low oxygen as you get in conditions such as pulmonary fibrosis, maybe you get breathless a little bit on exertion or things like that. And basically there haven't been a lot of studies, I think just showing what's the effect, the subjective effect that people feel. So when you have this brain fog, and this has been described in many, many instances, I think it can affect your judgment sometimes and your uh, decision making related to your pulmonary fibrosis. So I think it's something that really needs to be addressed. And I've, I've found some of these uh, mentioned in the literature. So let me read some of these out to you. So basically, this is a, again, an article that's fairly old, 2010, we consider it old <laughs> by medical standards, but I think it was just interesting. It's nothing to do specifically with pulmonary fibrosis, but if you find this out, you can just uh, look it up. Cognition, uh, if you're listening to this, uh, sorry, on the podcast, this is an article from um, a journal, Dementia and Neuropsychologia. So I don't know how good this article is, but I think some of the, the things that I will read to you make sense. So cognition and chronic hypoxia or low oxygen in pulmonary diseases. And basically... What they conclude in uh, this literature review, because it's basically a review of the national and international li literature, um, basically they just say, the authors conclude that patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which is another type of uh, respiratory condition, very common, not pulmonary fibrosis, but again, it's associated sometimes with low oxygen. So patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and sleep obstructive apnea, so obstructive sleep apnea syndrome, perform worse on tests of attention executive functions and mental speed. The severity of pulmonary disease correlates with the degree of cognitive impairment. So that's really interesting. And uh, let's, let's just uh, put their other conclusion. So this was in 2010, remember. Cognitive effects of clinical diseases are given limited importance in congresses and symposia. So this is really true. <laughs> uh, so, and then the other thing is here, Professionals that deal with patients presenting cognitive loss should be aware of the etiologies outlined above. 
as a major cause or potential contributory factors and of their implications for treatment adherence and quality of life. So this is an important message, I think. This is just from the abstract. But I think it's really, really interesting because I can tell you honestly that I think in medical conferences related to pulmonary fibrosis, I think only now we are starting to to emerge in that uh, in that sense that we are starting to talk more about patient reported outcomes and actually now studies that that look at uh, treatments for pulmonary fibrosis and things like that they do tend to to focus more on what is the patient experience but i think there was something else that i wanted to read to you out here so to, 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 to let me just find it so yeah basically i I think I think that was the summary. So this is basically this article outlines the types um, of symptoms that patients with chronic respiratory conditions such as COPD and sleep apnea may exhibit. So I won't uh, I won't go further into this because I can't find exactly what I was uh, looking at. Right. So th this is interesting. So basically. Um, patients um, were tested in many of these uh, instances by with some standardized questionnaires and things like that. And that can be quite sub subjective. And I think it's very hard to quantify brain fog, if, if that makes sense. It's really, really hard to, to do so. And I think we don't have the right tools. So I think one area of research that could be interesting is to develop these type of tools, actually. So that's that's something that, that's coming, coming on. Again, another study that I found, uh, let me just see where it was. This was a study in IPF patients, so patients with um, severe idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So now we're moving closer to the pulmonary fibrosis uh, realm. And this was a study that was uh, a little bit more recent. But let me just read you out the conclusion and I'll tell you what the study was. So the study never, nevertheless suggests that patients with severe IPF have poorer cognitive function, greater symptoms of depression and worse quality of life. How individuals with IPF perceive this diagnosis is beyond the scope of the study. However, it is likely that cognitive deficits may affect patients' understanding of the disease process, treatment requirements, and ability to assume therapeutic self-care practices. So this is super interesting for me. This was very interesting reading this because I think it, you can actually see it sometimes in, in patients in clinic who are struggling maybe with low levels of oxygen, severe um, disease severe pulmonary fibrosis, they may sometimes uh, be so consumed by the disease process, by the lack of oxygen, by all the things that are going on, that they may not be able to process the severity of the condition and to understand the treatments. And I'm not saying this because I'm trying to blame anyone. I'm just saying there may be an explanation in the low levels of oxygen and other things, other features of pulmonary fibrosis that we are maybe not investigating fully. So I think this is really interesting. So this is an article that's from 2015, Cognitive Function in Idiopathic Pulmonary Fibrosis. And again, we see these things in clinic as, uh, as doctors, people who have severe uh, chronic diseases, they struggle sometimes to process the diagnosis. This is something that I've, I've talked about in another uh, episode in which I was sharing some of the patient experiences from a patient support group and people were saying these sort of things. So it, I think the information is out there. We just, we just don't have the right tools to investigate uh, this brain fog that we see with oxygen. Again, there's another thing that I found that was interesting. So sleep oxygen desaturation predicts survival in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So this is from 2013. It's an older, um, an older article as well. But I think this one, I will read you the conclusions. Are the findings of the studies provide evidence that intermittent sleep oxygen desaturation significantly exceeds that of maximal exercise and is associated with survival in IPF patients, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis patients. Right, so this is to do with sleep. And this is something that's again, very, very interesting because during sleep, especially in people who have low oxygen due to their pulmonary fibrosis, the levels may drop even lower. And it is a known risk factor that uh, sleep disorders such as obstructive sleep apnea, in which this is a condition in which basically there are interruptions in breathing overnight, and then the oxygen level drops, the body wakes up slightly, you breathe faster a little bit, and then it goes back down. So this can happen a lot, a lot of times during the night. And people who have 
sleep apnea, they struggle with significant fatigue. So one, you may be getting low levels of oxygen that may be affecting your brain functions. And uh, two, uh, you may also be uh, struggling with um, with uh, all these other things that are going on. So not sleeping properly, not getting into the deep stages of sleep and low oxygen. So it can compound to create a very difficult situation for patients. So basically what I was trying to, to outline so far is that there are some bits of research that are looking at the fact that pulmonary fibrosis and chronic respiratory diseases seem to be associated with um, problems like brain fog. And the comment that was put on my channel really made me think about this a lot. And I, I'm sorry if I'm kind of jumping from one thing to the next and trying to show you little bits of information that I found, but I thought it's important to just share this with you, that we do think about these things, but we may not have the right tools to diagnose these problems. But I would say, I think what is actionable from, from all of this is that if you do struggle with low oxygen levels. I think it's really important if you have pulmonary fibrosis and maybe a low lung function to discuss this with your doctor, whether you would need to have an oxygen check. And I know psychologically for many people going on oxygen therapy is not easy because you may think that you need to wear that cannula. You feel uncomfortable doing that in front of your family or going um, out for to the, the shops on the street for a walk with the oxygen. But the oxygen is important to note that it's a form of treatment. And if we go back to this comment that the person left on this channel, that it may actually combat the, the brain dysfunction that can happen because we are operating with low levels of oxygen, you can imagine that you might actually get a big jump in your quality of life because you may be able to say, think clearly about things. Also, if there is a link with sleep, so if you're having very poor sleep, and low oxygen, I think that's a double whammy. It's an even more difficult situation in which your condition may, uh, may lead to complications very quickly. So again, having a sleep study done to screen for the presence of sleep apnea and treating that appropriately with advice from a sleep specialist may actually be really useful. And I can tell you that there are some, some studies that are looking into maybe um, treating this low level of oxygen better and actually measuring things properly. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of hope. This is a study that will be run in Australia and Sweden, I believe. It's the PFOX trial. So basically it's ambulatory, uh, sorry, I, I didn't share it. Let me just show you the, uh, the study. So ambulatory oxygen for treatment of exertional hypoxemia in pulmonary fibrosis. So the PFOX trial. Uh, so this is actually going to be uh, a trial, so a study in which we have this intervention and we're trying to figure out whether uh, oxygen actually really, really helps the patients. But it's not necessarily directed only at cognitive function. However, they will, uh, they will probably use some of these tools. And I think uh, if you look at, at the abstract from the, uh, the uh, protocol publication, so this is going to happen in the, in the future, it's basically uh, being run at the moment. So secondary outcomes, if you think about it, are, of course, the six-minute walk distance. So these are things related to the physiological capacity, how much exercise you can do, how far you can walk, but also things like the St. George Respiratory Questionnaire, EQ's 5D5L, and King's Brief Interstitial Lung Disease Questionnaire, Breathlessness Questionnaires, Fatigue Questionnaires, so Fatigue Severity Scale, Anxiety and Depression, and... Uh, all these other things. So I think it's really important to run these trials. I think this is going to be a very, very important study when it is uh, going to be published. And I, I think it, it's really, really interesting to just look at these things because we don't know some of these changes that happen. We don't know how to quantify them, how to measure them accurately. So I hope you found this um, interesting. I find the topic really interesting. And I think it just makes sense that if someone is operating with low oxygen, then low, lower than normal oxygen levels, these need probably need to be corrected in some way. And I know psychologically, it may be hard to go on oxygen, but it actually may be worse the, to not go on oxygen if you need it. However, on the flip side, just before I conclude, I'd like to say that not everyone requires oxygen therapy if they have pulmonary fibrosis. If you have only mild pulmonary fibrosis, it's not really leading to low oxygen levels. There is a problem if we give you oxygen, but you don't need it because we may create other complications. So it's really important to discuss with your doctor in your case whether 
oxygen is required for you. And the easiest way to, to do that objectively is to do a proper assessment for oxygen levels in a physiology department with your doctor, do a walk test, see if the, the oxygen levels drop. If you're having trouble sleeping, difficulty sleeping, you wake up with fatigue all the time, maybe doing a sleep study with your doctor or a sleep specialist may be helpful. So I hope this was interesting and um, useful. If you have further questions, do drop them in this comment section below and I'll try my best to answer or to share things that I find online. And it's really interesting when I get some of these comments because it makes me also want to read more and I learn more as well from you. So thank you very much for that and I wish you all the best and good health.